because the animation is definitely the highlight here. Movies from this era always just have such, like, creative things going on with their character designs and stuff, and that's really all on full display here, especially with the background art and the wildlife characters here. The fairies are, you know, pretty generic fairies that uh, wear a questionable amount of clothing. A bit of a different and special review for today. The team at Shelf Factory sent me a copy of the brand new Blu-ray for Ferngully. This is the 30th anniversary edition of a classic, uh, a climate awareness movie, basically. I don't know how many of you out there actually heard of this. It definitely seems like the kind of thing that I would have had on like VHS as a kid, but I've actually never seen it. My only exposure to it, its existence was a Nostalgia Critics review, which, you know, doesn't really paint a good picture of the movie. So I was pretty excited to watch it for myself. The only like classic 2D movies I've really watched have just been the stuff from Disney and like Road to El Dorado, but that, you know, that's a little more recent. That's not even from the 90s. So I was really interested to watch this movie. And I could say that it definitely surprised me. It's, uh, the problems I have with it are probably just a result of it being dated and it, you know, not being comparable to Disney, but it's still thoroughly enjoyable. I kind of see this more as like a possible, uh, cult classic kind of movie. Something that maybe, like, if you're a teacher, you would show it to elementary school kids to teach them about the environment. Or if you're hanging out with some friends who also like animation, you could put it on and have a few laughs, but also admire how uh, pretty creative some elements are and how nice it is visually. Since this is the 30th anniversary release of the movie, uh, I was kind of expecting this DVD to be like, you know, the, the special aspect would be it having a lot of bonus features, but it actually doesn't really. I think the only new bonus feature on it that probably wasn't featured on any other release of the movie is a little interview with the director before the movie plays. And, well, that was actually really interesting and insightful. I really like that it seems that Shout Factory includes that sort of stuff in their releases for animation. That explained how this was one of the first movies to combine traditional art with digital art. And there's even some 3D stuff thrown in here. And honestly, if he, like, didn't say that, I wouldn't have noticed that some of the elements here were computer generated because they mesh together so seamlessly. Whatever like, you know, cell shading or something they did to the computer generated elements looks really, really impressively natural. It's kind of similar to like how CG in Invader Zim looks, but it, like a lot better. I mean, the, the way the CG elements are interacting with hand drawn stuff is, is just really impressive. I did not expect that. And one of the bonus features is a multi angle viewing performance of the villain song, meaning that like, you can use the angle button on your remote to change between camera shots of uh, the performance or of the animation. Like swapping between the actual voice acting performance from Tim Curry or just looking at the animation. And I've never seen a bonus feature like that before. I didn't even know the angle button was a thing. It took me a little bit to figure out how to access that on the PlayStation because I use my PlayStation as a DVD player and well, you, you can do it on the PlayStation surprisingly. I've just, I've never seen anything with that as an option that's pretty damn cool this even seemed like it was a old bonus feature so i guess this might have been like a gimmicky thing that some older dvd releases and stuff did i'm surprised i've never come across this feature on any sort of other dvd i have i think that's a pretty cool little like gimmicky bonus feature but the actual highlight of this anniversary release seems to be the remastered scan of the original film and i mean yeah it looks pretty amazing i mean it's an old traditionally animated movie so there's not that much you could really uh, do with it. It just, you know, looks perfectly crisp. I would assume older releases of this, like, uh, this one with, like, the, the new, the new box art is so much better than this one. What is going on here? This doesn't even look like the movie. Uh, but I would assume older releases probably were, like, very grainy, but this one is really nice and clear. I didn't really notice any visual problems aside from uh, maybe, like, one or two shots seeming like they were stuttering or, like, getting blurry, but, I mean, that might have literally just been my TV. I don't really know. But also it was like motion shots, so maybe that was something with the remastering, but it, you know, it's minor enough. Because the animation is definitely the highlight here. Movies from this era always just have such like creative things going on with their character designs and stuff. And that's really all on full display here. Especially with the background art and the wildlife characters here. The fairies are, you know, pretty generic fairies that uh, wear a questionable amount of clothing. But characters like uh, Batty that Robin Williams plays are really interestingly animated and really funny. Like, Batty's kind of a dark character idea. Like, he just escaped from human experiments and he has some sort of implant. But instead of treating it like something that should be pretty scary and sad, they make it humorous. 
and it works really well with Robert Williams' style of humor, because they have the little implant on his head act as an antenna, and he's just like constantly switching between impressions like he's like switching channels on TV. I thought that was really clever. And this was before Robin Williams even played the genie, so, I mean, right here we knew he was great for animation, and just like the genie, they found a really fun excuse to use his signature style of humor. The other highlight is Tim Curry as the villain, which, like, if there's anything people know from this movie, it's probably that. The little villain song he has, Toxic Love, like, really surprised me, because I definitely had heard that before, because it's, like, kind of an iconic thing. But man, it is really good. It's definitely a highlight of the movie. Even just the way he's animated, like, First he starts as sludge and then he turns into smoke. Like, it, it, it looks so cool. It's honestly a big step up uh, from how some of the other stuff in the movie is animated. Like, they definitely had a specific artist who was really good at drawing, like, liquids to do his sorts of animations. And it really stands out. It's so cool. I was kind of sitting the whole movie waiting for him to, like, show up more. But he kind of doesn't. Like, he has his song moment and then he comes to destroy the forest. But when he's destroying the forest, he's kind of just, like a giant generic monster like laughing maniacally the personality that's presented earlier in the movie doesn't really come through which is a bit disappointing but i mean that short song moment is enough and his beautiful animation continues to be present even when he's not really acting with much of a personality the rest of the movie is pretty straightforward i feel like it's rude to say that it's bland because like the it's it's exactly what it is you know there's like really awkward romantic stuff and just like strange interactions and like completely out of nowhere musical number like the what, what was that an iguana it's like singing about how he was gonna eat the human and it's a really good song and really good sequence but like it just completely comes out of nowhere it has nothing to do with the rest of the movie but i i'm for it i can just definitely appreciate this movie being one of the first of its kind having an environmentally aware message to explain to young children and in the director's interview, he said that he tried not to make it preachy. And honestly, they did a pretty good job of that. It really just does throw you into the world of the fairies. It doesn't like explicitly say like, oh my god, humans are so bad. Uh, I mean, that's what it illustrates clearly. But the fairy characters don't really know anything about humans. So it's not like they had a vendetta against them. It's just when they finally encounter humans after so long, they're destroying the forest. So, you know, it's not as deliberately explained to the viewer. There's no like turn to the camera, oh my god, like donate to, to this foundation to, to help us save the forest and stuff. Like it's it's all interwoven into the story in a way that works pretty perfectly for young kids. So yeah, I was pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed this movie. It's definitely just a bit dated. You know, there's some awkwardness. There's a lot of moments where there's just no sound. Like there's, there's just dialogue and I felt like there should have at least been music or uh, environmental noises or something, but it's it it's just like a silent background. It, it's 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 weird. There's like some weird pacing stuff, you know. But it it's just like a classic little kids movie with some surprisingly fun elements, like Robin Williams' character and uh, Tim Curry as the villain. There's some impressive animation, primarily with uh, the backgrounds. Like even the the very beginning of the movie is like uh, just a montage of the fairies flying through the forest and. The way that that was composed was really interesting because like it definitely mixes in some 3d digital stuff but it also just mixes in some like multi-plane sort of illusionary stuff with with uh, the backgrounds and it looks really really cool like that was an awesome sequence i was kind of surprised they didn't reuse that sort of visual gimmick for like a chase scene or something later on like after that moment all the animation uh, composition wise is a bit more straightforward but that was a really cool flowing sequence so if you watch this movie as a kid, or you're an animation collector, or you're just looking for a pretty interesting classic movie that you may have never seen before, I would definitely recommend checking this Blu-ray release out. It had me laughing a bit, and also just, you know, had me remembering how much I admire how technically involved animation is. There's some enjoyably impressive stuff in here. So once again, thanks to Shout Factory for sending me this Blu-ray, and I hope you'll consider checking it out, and I hope you enjoyed this review. I know I try to stay consistent, like covering news on this channel, but I do really like reviewing just random things that come to mind pretty often. So I, I, thought, I saw this as a really great opportunity. So thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos like this.